Hello, beautiful, amazing, fantastic world, and you, amazing individual. Today, I would like to speak about a little complex topic, really. It has to do with the lower beings of this earth, more or less. In our body, as I have told earlier, we have progressive spirits and we do have backward spirits. In our nervous system, we have Ariman. Ariman is that force that is on the side of, well, the best one, the best we can call it is con conservative or stagnant. Wanting to stay stuck, Philistine, cold and dry, more or less. Completely taking all life and fun and joy out of existence and everything is a chore and everything is a duty. That is Ariman. He is also very non-religious, so you can, you can understand why he is in your nervous system. He affects our thinking in the way that we should be too serious, too Philistine, too cold and too dry, Cal uh, only calculating and ma mathematical and wanting proof and he's a very very specific character and you know that you know this type of being right he is on the one side in our nervous system then we have lucifer or the luciferic spirits when we breathe have a steady slow breath under our control we are in the alignment of the progressive good spirits if we starting to panic and breathe fast and get irregular breathing rhythms and get us get that imbalance by that irregular breathing that is the luciferic spirits it is also the force that is overly abstract and spiritual and frivolous that wants to get away from this earth he don't want to be here he don't want to participate he just want to, to extract mankind out of our bodies and have us in a separate spiritual sphere, being moral automatons. And Ariman on the other side wants our empty dried husks. So Ariman is the squeezer out of the juices and our Lucifer takes away that juice to his own, to his own realm. Lucifer is all, also called that old serpent in the apocalypse, the ancient wisdom religion that today doesn't work anymore since we are in the age of love and consciousness and not wisdom anymore. Hazy, medium-like wisdom that you can't completely comprehend through practical life. And then we have the worst of the worst spiritual being. I do not like speaking about this being. He is the sun demon, the Asuric force, Surat. Surat is the symbol 666 of the black magicians. You see, in the apocalypse, there are three beasts. That old serpent, the beast with seven heads and ten horns, and we have Surat, the beast with two horns. The serpent is in the air. Ariman comes out of the earth, the seven head, ten horn beast, and Surat comes out of the water. So, by this alone, in our nervous system, in our coagulation, in our scleroticism, Ariman appears, wanting to be dry us up, become rock-like, more or less. Lucifer in the air wants us to dissolve. And then we have Surat on his own, which is the sun demon, the adversary of the Christ. He is... If you ever follow Black Magician, I'm not going to go into any detail of that whatsoever. But if you choose to hollow yourself out to become a Black Magician, Surat will embody you. He will come into your hollow body and embody himself in you. That is Black Magic. And Surat is the symbol of human being. The Black Magician, 666. So you see, there are three adversary forces towards the Christ today. And the balance we normally have is Lucifer, Ariman, Christ. Christ in the middle, Lucifer on the one scale, Ariman on the other scale. 
And you see how the world is split in two today, Lucifer versus Araman. Everything brotherly love that has to do with inclusion, understanding, upliftment to do, that has to do with true, well, up, true development and unfoldment is the Christ. Everything against it wants to stay stuck there or wants you to run away from earth here or wants you to completely hollow yourself out in depraved actions. So we do have a whole lot of adversaries and challenges in, human, in the human being. And by knowing these three forces, especially the two first, Lucifer and Ariman, the Christ is the balance. Because they are an outer physical reality, the dissolving and the keeping together. And by us becoming aware of them, you can see it through many actions, through many of your own patterns and habits in many ways. It is all about being objective enough to see it within yourself and see it out in the world. Because the two extreme scales are either or, you see. But being in the middle, I call it the radical middle, more or less. It's the strength of both sides and none of their weaknesses. Because you take both their strength and weaknesses into consideration, understanding them and strengthening your own power to even be able to comprehend such things. And understand them, right? So, let's recap here. That old serpent in the air, Lucifer, in our, uh, and in our breathing, and in the earth, nervous system, in our bones, in our scleroticism, drying up, Araman, the dry thinking, Philistine, just only taking what they see as proof, as reality, and then we have Surat, which is the, the one that is the least affecting us right now, but he is waking up again. His depravity, black magic, his sexual rampant lusts and yeah, his animalistic tendency for overpassion and a complete utter attack on anything spiritual. So these are the extremes and we have them all within us and it is we as the center that balances ourselves out. As I said, everything uplifting that makes you want to understand and comprehend, that wants you to see others succeed, that wish for you to see this world grow, become more loving, understanding, and also the Luciferic Arimanic spirits are not evil per se. You can redeem them through, well, having them in the sphere they belong. Lucifer, you see, has... As I said, he wants us to dissolve, but he is also the bearer of beauty, the bearer of arts, the bearer of the abstract, grandiose feelings of fantasy and imagination. Ariman is our calculative and very precise and direct thinker. And he is, has a whole lot to do with our very precise and very distinct types of thinking right now. So we have to owe, we owe them some, we owe them some thanks, you see. Of course we do, they are not our, they are not our leaders, they are not our guides. They are more or less, sorry to say it, but they are a challenge. They are here to make us choose freedom, love and care. It is important to be aware of them, as I said. And you see how I, how I explain them directly as types of being which can be quite generalized, but they are still working within the individual too. And it is all about observing and finding them in yourself. Lucifer in fantastical, frivolous, abstract thinking. Araman in dry Philistine cotton uh, it is it is duty and life is nothing more than that the dry it's so dry so so cold and so detached and then you have surat the black magician yeah i think this was everything i truly always am nervous when i speak about these types of beings because they have to be very very 
distinctly described so you can get a feeling of who they are, what they are and how they affect us. And you, as long as you can have that reflected out in behaviors and let's say behaviors of bigger groups and so on, you can see that they are tinged with either aramonic or luciferic coloring. But if you are the Christ, it is always in inclusive love, always in understanding, always in care and the warm heart. That is the difference. That is the balance. And you have both, both their strengths balanced into Christ because the Christ must be our future leader and guide if we are truly to take a hold of the ideal human being for the future. He showed us what... He showed us the deeds he did that we can follow and that we can have as an inner reality to embody as much as possible this love. And it is up to each and every individual one of us to find out how we are going on about it. Since you are your role model. You, if you are watching my videos, you are an extremely developed human being, which means... You are the role model. You are the example. You come here to gain inspiration so that you can also be uplifting. As I said with Armin and Lucifer and Sura, they are not to be focused on, but they are to be registered and recognized for where they are placed and so on. We, are not, we should not let them run rampant, but we need to be aware that they're there. We need to be not afraid of them. Because if you're afraid of them and I don't want to see them, then they spread out to everywhere else. By you being observant and seeing them, they see you seeing them. So you rattle them, transforming them. When the sun shines in on a dark spot that has been dark for ages, it will rattle. So think about that picture for a moment. By you shining out love, care, nurture and understanding for mankind you shine out the sun and that sun pains a whole lot of beings which is why many say take notice an example who does he think he is does he think he's better than us is he a good detusius or a rule follower and so on but this is just pure speculation first and foremost i don't share enough of me for any people to have a whole big picture of me because my personal life is mine and mine alone. The spiritual life in which I share is my work. It is what, what I do and everything outside of that, no one else has anything to do with because it is my life, my personal individual life and it is between my, me, Christ, God and the Holy Spirit. I share with those that I feel I can trust because there are a whole lot of people that automatically looks for weaknesses and so on. And it is concerning, to say the least. So it is important to just uphold, observe, and see, can this person, where does this person come from? That is what we do, just being aware and awake. Not taking any big connotation into anything, but doing the right thing in the moment when things occur. Things can be karmic, of course, where it feels like you behaved a way you never would behave. In, at that time but it happened because it was let's say someone slapped you in the face two lifetimes ago it hasn't been paid yet and then all of a sudden you get so pissed that you slap someone in the face and no one ever gets to know about it and he doesn't tell anyone else about it because it was such a situation that it kind of felt justified to do so this has not or this is of course just a situation of karma but after your separate ways, you... Why? Why did I do that? It is because you were slapped in the face earlier and you wanted to repay that. He himself wanted to repay himself through you. That is what happens after death. We live inside and they live inside you against those we have done transgressions against or helped. It is either or so. And if we have done something ill towards someone else that wasn't in the karmic alignment, we will have to pay it back. And hence, many times it can feel like you all of a sudden are embodied by karma in a moment. It has happened, at least to me, many times. 
uh, where I also feel like others have lost control in certain sense, but not really. It it, it was just it was it was a smooth out uh, out out reaction, and then everything was fine afterwards. <laughs> karma is wonderful and so hard to explain because it is both karma and we have our choices we are doing in this moment, and we have uh, destiny, destined people we meet. We have chosen to meet each other at this at this certain places in lifetime and hence we are coloring our experiences towards certain directions so of course you can completely have insight into all of this that would be boring then we would want to have a manuscript and read the script for our lives but we are not meant to do that life is not meant to be predictable life is meant to be well Experience after experience of growth, so you can unfold as a human being, as understanding, as love and care. So I think this was everything. I love you all. Thank you so much. May the Divine and may Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Hierarchy, and all I can include in this beautiful moment, bless, guide, protect, and love you. Because you are amazing. You are, you are your role model. You are others' role model. So keep doing what you're doing. You are wonderful. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>